All right, we'll go. All right, one Delta one here. All right, so I missed the cutoff date for the day to register to be able to get my salvage inspection. Uh, so that does give me another week to get the transmission a little bit more ironed out. Um, gives me a moment more time to clean. Uh, a little bit more time to go to the salvage yard and get miscellaneous like there's these pop poppets or plastic rivet wells with the plastic Phillips head screw in the middle of it um, those go on the door trim I've lost most of the actual rivet side of those so I've got to get those um, uh, i got to clean up some more I've got to figure out what's wrong with my heat um, for I don't know. It may be because I have the wrong door on it. It may it may has to have a, a specific door. I don't know. Um, but all of the other doors work. The fan blower works. The recirculator door works. The AC button works. The don't have a rear defroster, so I can't check check if that works. Um, and the mode door that changes where the air goes works. The only thing that doesn't work is the hot and cold knob. Um, which, if you unplug the battery and plug the battery back up and move the mode door, it moves. Um, I think it might be the wrong one. I don't know. I think they, were, they weren't. I think that door was generic. I, I can't remember. I got to look and make sure. Uh, I may have to go to Rock Auto and get one. I don't quite particularly know. Um, but essentially, what's going to happen is that I'm probably going to get another one of those and whatever. But that's not the the point of this vlog. All right, right now I am stuck behind someone moving slow as hell all the way from Texas. I'll be damned. I'm in a Texas truck behind someone from Texas that's driving slow. Isn't the speed limit faster in Texas? I'm quite sure, but look at that gap, though. Look at that gap, son. Um, essentially, the speed limit is uh, 45. Uh, we're doing 43 ish um but the whole point of this video all right there's a feature pardon my language on this fucking radio that i didn't know it had okay this entire time since i put this radio in i've been thinking i have been having an electrical issue or did i have a faulty radio because when i come to a stop the radio volume goes down when i speed up the volume goes up when i I, I don't have to be going at a specific speed. I could turn the steering wheel left or turn the steering wheel right. And the volume would go down. And as I turn the steering wheel back straight, it'll go up. Or sometimes while I'm turning, it'll go back up. At various throttle positions, at various angles, at various speeds. I've been thinking I hadn't been having issues with my freaking electrical system. This radio has a freaking mode that lets you adjust if and how much the volume increases and decreases based on vehicle speed. I mean, literally, it's it's in here under... You You guys are about to get really close, just letting you know. You can get... I can push that. Go to, we're in audio. All right. Right there, speed adjusted audio. It was on three. It was on three. I put it on zero or off. And it says vehicle... Vol increased volume level relative to an increased vehicle speed. I hate you or Dodge. I've seriously been thinking something's been wrong with my radio or my electrical system this entire time. And it, all it is is a setting. And it's a stock setting. It's not a setting that you set up go go right turn on red right turn on red I actually had to blow the horn for right turn on red that is quite sad I actually had to Blow the horn for right turn on red, and they're still going below the speed limit. Speed limit is 30, we're doing 20. I don't know. 
Um, but essentially, that's been my whole issue with the volume issue. I I thought I had a problem with my electrical system the whole time. It's a setting that Mopar has in the radio, and it's a factory setting. It's not something you actually set. Or it may not be now. A software update might be different. I don't know. Look at the trucks. These, these, this dealership here does have some Rams on their lot as you just saw. They primarily, thank you for getting back on your side of the road at the very last minute. I didn't, I didn't need a scare at all today. Um, but essentially, they specialize in F-250s and Chevy Silverados and they lift them. Um, and when I say they lift them, they lift them extremely high, like eight inches or so. And, um, the Mopar uh, trucks they get, they don't lift those as high. They lift those about three inches or so. And they, they look pretty stout. But all the Fords and the Chevys that they get on their lot that they lift are at least six to eight inches. Whereas the Dodge would be like three or four inches of lift. And they ride like shit. Will never lift my truck nowhere near that high. Um, this has a leaf spring delete on it from the factory so it's what Mopar calls the coil spring so I've got coil springs all the way around so I don't know if that's considered easier to lift or if that's considered harder to lift I don't know I've never lifted a coil uh, a four corner coil setup before I've never done it so this is my first um, to be honest the thing is is that um with this being a front wheel drive, I mean rear wheel drive truck, lifting the truck would make sense to clear the freaking spoiler in the front, but it doesn't really make much sense as far as lifting it too high because, you know, no matter how high you lift a truck, the lowest point will always be the lowest point. Um, on typical, uh, on typical standard axle vehicles, especially pickup trucks, your um, hub or your what are you doing it would be nice if you would there you go you have a signal on and you can you could have already been gone oh my god i'm out of van. oh my god um but anyway your differential is usually your lowest part on any uh on any vehicle well not necessarily some vehicles will even have the front cross member as low as the differential, if not as close. But in in general standing, your your axle is going to be your your axle house is going to be your lowest point on your vehicle. So no matter how high you lift it, you're still stuck at that same ground clearance. What you do change is you do change your um, pitch or well, your entrance and departure angles when you lift your vehicle. Um, now. Don't get me wrong, you can get bigger wheels or bigger tires, and it will raise your um, vehicle lowest center, lowest point. However, the amount of uh, size that you have to add on to your vehicle as far as tires and wheels wise does not coincide or does not match up with the amount of lift that you would get so like basically if you went up two or three sizes like this truck has 17s if i went to 20s or if i would say i went up even more to 22s i wouldn't get that much of a lift from my um from my um axle essentially jesus christ look at that traffic mm. um but essentially what you're looking at i'm going to cheat I'm gonna go all the way down on this end, and then I'm gonna drive up, and then I'm gonna, well, they're not going that way because they're trying to load trailers. Um, but essentially, your tires are, are for the most part, your tires are for the most part um, sized based on your rim size and your well of your truck. So basically, even if I go up a 22 inch rim from a 17, we still have this ever, ever pressing fact that my tire is going to be uh, phased down to the size that it's going to need to be in order to 
fit inside my wheel well. So even though I might go, I might go up for, okay, I guess they hit each other. But even though they might go, right. Even though they might go up uh, four inches in, tire, in rim size, my tire size is gonna take that back down. Um, look at that traffic. <laughs> Um, this is going to be an interesting one. I'm probably just going to get off so I can navigate through Hell's Highway, guys. So, peace.